Great. Okay, so next up, we have the next slide up here. Great. Uh, Desmond Cole. I'm looking around. So there he is. Here he comes. Welcome, Desmond Cole. Thank you. We're going to talk about affordable housing. Though. Just as a starting point, we've got a slide up here with those social planning Toronto and Toronto West. So I'm going to ask you, Desmond, if you could start by explaining what's up with that. I will. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here and for allowing me to speak. Um, my name is Desmond Cole. I'm a journalist and an activist in the city of Toronto. Uh, the reason for the logos is not uh, because I'm here officially representing either of the organizations that you see on the screen. I do write for Torontoist. They are, they are my home. They are where I publish most of my work on issues including housing. And uh, the reason that Social Planning Toronto's logo is up there this morning is because uh, as a journalist, I like to interview other people and then you know pass their brilliant ideas off as my own. And so uh, I, uh, I do a lot of work asking Social Planning Toronto and other organizations in the city about housing, and getting them essentially to teach me about the research that they do about uh, how we understand the housing stock that we have in Toronto. And uh, so I got a lot of information specifically from Beth, Beth, excuse me, Beth Wilson and her team at Social Planning Toronto. So I want to thank them for helping me to deliver what I'm about to deliver to you right now. Um, so why do we want to talk about housing? Um, one of my colleagues in the city of Toronto, who is Ed Keenan, who writes for The Grid, many of you may know him, wrote very recently, I think actually this week, that housing ought to be a much bigger issue in our public discourse than it is. I mean, this being an election year, we really ought to be talking about housing. And of course, I agree with that. Why don't we talk about housing? I think one of the big reasons we don't talk about housing is because we're faced with these huge abstract numbers and ideas around Toronto's uh, public housing stock, Toronto community housing. So we hear that there's X hundred thousand people on a waiting list. We hear that the repair backlog is X hundreds of millions of dollars, and it all sounds big and abstract and overwhelming. So it's hard for people to engage on that front. But they still care about the issue. They just don't have more uh, concrete information. So basically, um, to try and bring that down to a bit more of a ground level where people can understand it, I want to talk about a couple of broad issues, and then two or three specific maybe if problems or examples that this group might be able to address. So one of the big issues that we have in housing and why it's so hard to understand, I think, is that housing runs across all levels of government. We have federal, provincial, and municipal responsibilities as far as housing goes, and different levels are responsible for different things. The federal government provides loans. The federal government has guarantees to support housing for a certain number of years, but a lot of people don't understand that that's the case. You know, we have a, a provincial government who, again, you know, might, maybe some of you heard that there was a big uh, to-do recently. Uh, the province and the city got into a fight because the province promised to forgive a loan. Do you guys remember that? Uh, that that the, uh, they said, we're going to forgive a loan that, that's for housing and, 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 you know, you don't have to worry about it anymore. And the city says, well, we didn't think we had to worry about it and we kind of just forgot about that. So are we really saving money if you forgive this loan? And there was a big argument back and forth between Queen's Park and City Hall. So these are difficult things for people to understand. Um, so understanding those um, arrangements and agreements between governments is something that we need more clarity on. Uh, another thing that I think would be helpful is uh, what are other municipalities doing with their housing stock? We hear a lot about Toronto. How are other municipalities managing their housing stock? Do they have the same level of repair backlog that Toronto does? Are they having the same problem with need that Toronto has? I don't know. I don't see a lot of that data. I admit I don't go looking for it very often, but I think that comparisons between municipalities would be really helpful in understanding how bad is the situation, how good is the situation, what opportunities are there. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. So now in terms of some specific uh, specific issues that we might want to look into here. One of them uh, has to do with eviction. So this is directly from social planning. Social planning wants to know how many people get evicted from their apartments in Toronto. Uh, very obvious reasons for that, but 
That data is not available unless you request it. We have eviction orders, actually, uh, but that doesn't tell you the whole story about how many people are actually losing their housing. So I think one uh, particular thing that we would like to know more about is um, how many people do get evicted from their apartments in Toronto, and can that data be shared without it having to be directly requested on a case-by-case -case basis? Um, the second one uh, would be about repairs. So I was mentioning earlier, we hear a lot about the repair backlog at the City of Toronto, and it's growing, and it's growing, and it's growing. Can we give people more information? Um, when somebody wants in TCHC to have a certain repair done in their building, and they file a request, can we help that person by also letting them know what other requests are being filed within their building? If five people see that there's a huge hole in the stairwell, are they all gonna have to make the same request or is there a way of sharing the information? Uh, and just so that people get a bigger picture, I, I think that um, you know we've got a chief magistrate of the city of Toronto who likes to go door to door um, and to talk about housing problems on a case by case basis. I personally don't think that that's good enough. We can't look at our housing stock as a leaky faucet, hole in the wall, piece by piece by piece kind of basis. We have to help people have a bigger picture of what's going on. How do we do that? Um, a third thing, uh, maybe a little more detailed, but still very important, and this is not specifically to do with Toronto community housing, but about renters in general. So how many folks here have an idea of how much property tax they pay in a given year? Let me see your hands up. Okay, lots of you. I heard too much over here. That's you should run for office. Um, uh, I'm just kidding, but uh, I think if I'm going to guess, I would guess that most of you who know that information know it because you receive that information from the city of Toronto and they tell you what your property tax burden is. That's because you're a mortgage holder, though. If you're a renter and you're not the person holding that building, you don't actually know what your property tax burden is. Meaning that unlike a mortgage holder who can go to their politician and say, I know what you're doing, I know what you're spending, here's what I think about it, there's no opportunity to do that. How do we give renters information about their property tax burden? It's very complicated, right? Everybody lives in a different size building and you, know, you have to break it down differently, different units. But I feel like renters should have some way of knowing what their burden is, even as an approximation, so that they can start to hold politicians accountable in the same way that somebody who holds a mortgage does. Uh, so those are some of the ideas that I wanted to bring today. Um, I'm gonna be here for a little bit this early afternoon. I encourage anybody who wants to talk more about this uh, to come and let's trade information and let's trade ideas and keep the conversation going. And thanks so much. Thanks, Ed. stuff in there. And I think some of the data you discussed was government side, some of it is maybe data that people themselves know about. So I'm kind of looking at Heather right now. I'm just thinking about maybe mapping some of that information. That's where my mind's going. Um, I can call that as a mapper. Um, so I think, I, <laughs> so, so, so uh, I have a clinical bias. I like maps, and I know data is not a good solution. More often than not, you really have to decide when you're going to use a map and when you're not going to use a map. And so there are a lot of ways you could do this. You can look at OpenStreetMap and see what layers are on OpenStreetMap right now. There's a vibrant community which Richard Wyatt has been like running meetups for every every month uh, about OpenStreetMap and you could potentially do some citizen engagement around mapping and knowing where those houses are. But I would encourage you to think about the fact that there's some privacy issues around that. You know, not a lot of people want their place noted as being potentially that. And if the data is open, great. But if it isn't, you have to think about like, who you're serving. That's one thing about data and when you're talking about people's housing, that's a feeling moment. The second thing I think that, um, I think there's a bigger opportunity for you that maybe you don't throw tech at it first. Maybe you use an infographic, maybe you use a map, but maybe you think about how you're telling a story. I think this is, and this is what I've learned from, um, if it, I'm Ukrainian, and so this week there's been a video out called I Am Ukrainian, and 3.7 million people have seen that video as of last night. And it's an incredible way to tell a story, which is awful. But what is the checklist or the upworthy, and I know it's really cheap, like it's a cheap win to do it this way first, but think about like, how would you tell the story in a way that would reach people, right? So what is the upworthy, top 10 for what is housing issues in Canada or in Toronto, because I personally 
This is, this, I know more about housing issues in Sao Paulo than I know about Toronto. And that's because they're really loud about it and people talk about palavas and that's because I work internationally on international development. So what can we learn from what's happening in international development and how they're talking about housing in Kibera in, in Nairobi, in Kenya? How can we use that to help you? Because the Voices of Kibera is a map project with Jesus Ushahidi and they talk about their neighborhoods and how they feel about it and water and all those issues. So it's a real citizen engagement kind of way to do it. But you have so much story to tell that I haven't seen enough of, and I'm really excited for you. And I think I also think it's an important thing to do because we're not talking about when you're talking about data, you're talking about what is our city and where to, what city, what kind of city do we want to have, and who's our neighbor, and you're trying to take care of your neighbors, and that's beautiful. I think what's uh, what you brought up is really interesting is getting all levels of government involved. Because that's very key, right? There's three different types of data sets that we have to work together with. I think you should stay past early afternoon today. And if anything, you should stay tomorrow too. And the, re and the reason is, we have all the right people in the room. Right? We have a very large community here. We have, uh, I think the registration was something, 60 something developers here. Right? So we have tech, we have policy makers, we have government folks, and we have community. So what you really need is all the ideas merged together so, so that we can all work together. And, and the community is the answer. And this is actually a pretty powerful thing. So stay a little longer, work with us, and we'll try to figure it out. Thanks, Steve. Good luck your way now. Uh, so Desmond, you touched on such an important issue. There are, uh, there are 1 1.2 million households that actually rent in the province that are renters. And 20% of those live in subsidized or social housing. Uh, so it's 240,000 people that rely, uh, families that rely on, uh, that rely on social housing. And maybe more tragically, there's 8,500 uh, people that rely on shelters uh, to get some place to live on a regular basis. And it has such broad implications for everything, for the workforce, for education opportunities, for the social fabric of the province that we live in. Uh, but there's so little we know about uh, what we need to do. And so the starting point has got to be better access to information, more visibility around uh, where the problems are. There is a great non-for-profit sector in Ontario that could be engaged to help out. Uh, we don't have unlimited resources, as you know, uh, despite the fact that we're forgiving loans apparently all over the place. <laughs> uh, and, it, but, but we could engage, if we had better uh, data, we could engage the not-for-profit sector. Uh, there's capital repair requirements. Uh, some of this housing stock is very old, and uh, uh, but, but we, you know, nobody can afford to take this on by themselves, but together, collectively, I think we can make a significant difference. But we, the starting point has got to be, we need to understand uh, the problem, the issues, the data, the families that are impacted by this, uh, and what we can do to, to make a difference. Thank you. Um, I think this is a great project because, uh, as you know, uh, the city of Toronto and uh, Toronto housing has been uh, very much on the top of the uh, priority and uh, spoke often with a lot of us, you know, colorful story. Um, I, when I look at uh, this whole issue of social housing, uh, uh, specifically from the city point of view, the data uh, is there, but not necessarily is being meaningful from uh, both um, <coughs> operational data versus planning data. And uh, Toronto is a very, very diverse city, lots of communities. And uh, yes, we have a very, very close relationship with community, but I think out there, especially in the nonprofit sector and the community, it, I, I would suspect that there will be a rich, a very wealth of rich data that would help not only the administration of Toronto housing, but also the, um, from the planning side, to look at um, not just the issue around repairing, look at backlog, look at also demographic, also look at a very, um, maybe opportunity to address some of the chronic issue of co continuously backlog of maintenance. I mean, we are selling like crazy. You know that if you go online, there's lots of, um, all houses, you know, from, from the Toronto Housing Corporation are on sale right now. Why? Because they need the money to bring it back and forth in, uh, in addressing all of this backlog maintenance. 
but that is not sustainable. How much more you can really sell? So going back to the waiting list, it can't really uh, rely on the same model that you hope to have facility available. So I think there's an opportunity for you to look at potential partnership with different uh, sector, can, uh, either community, a non-profit organization, or even private sector, in order to really uh, look at different model of addressing affordable housing, and then <coughs> define what is affordable, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. I've heard a lot of stuff, so kind of stories, into government cooperation, the profit sector. It's a lot of stuff to work with on this one. And I think uh, that's all very helpful feedback. So, thanks very much, Desmond.